because I really sense God moving during those songs. And, um, you know, as we think about those songs, I was thinking of that last song standing down there because the topic this morning is wisdom. And it's not just talking about wisdom to talk about wisdom. But as we look at the book of James today, we're talking about our relationship with people. All through the book of James, we're learning how to interact with each other. We're learning how to help each other. We're learning how to come alongside each other. And today in this passage of scripture that closes out chapter 3, James is focusing in verses 13 through 18 on wisdom and talking about wisdom and how does wisdom relate to you and me. We all need wisdom. We all need understanding. That's the first question that James asks in verse uh, 13. And, and so today, I hope that as we hear about wisdom, we'll think about influencing. I need people to influence my life. And thank God I have a few people that in the last several months have become those influencers in my life because I need wisdom. I need to make good choices. I need to make right decisions. And, and there are some of you today who are great influencers. God has given you great wisdom. God has given you the ability to interact with people, to be an influencer in the lives of people. Some of us are here today because we need an influencer. We need someone to come into our life because life's been hard. There's difficulties that have arisen in our life, our lives. We find ourselves faced with difficulties that sometimes it seems so insurmountable. We sit and cry alone at night. We worry in the morning. We walk through the day just, God, what's happening? What's going on? I don't know if that describes you. I know it describes me at times. And I know that sometimes in my humanity, I find that I, I step away from wisdom because I get clouded by what I'm concerned about is the best route to go on a human level. And then I get myself all in trouble because I'm walking on a human level and I'm not walking in wisdom. I want us to be a church that influences people. We need to influence each other. I hope we get to the place like we already have, have such a great group of people here who speak into the lives of people serving, speak into the lives of helping people, speaking into the lives of caring for people. I want to see us take one more step where we can speak into the lives of each other and not be afraid where we can speak into lives of each other knowing that because you're struggling today, your place is not outside those doors, your place is inside this door, in these doors. When you find yourself all alone and you say, God, I don't know if I'm measuring up today. God, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing today. Don't walk out of here thinking you gotta live in that place in your head. Know that inside this building, we are building people to be influencers, that someday you'll get to be an influencer if you're struggling today, because the things that God is taking you through, the things that you're facing, God is going to be able to use that, and God is going to be able to use you, and you're going to become an influencer in someone's life. So I want to encourage you and me today. Let's look and see what James says about wisdom. Let's think about what we can do as a friend. As we were singing that last song, I couldn't help but to think what a friend we do have in Jesus. You know, what a friend who stands beside us and walks alongside of us. And how you and I can reflect that spirit of Jesus as we allow God to walk alongside each other. So in this passage of scripture, I want to share a couple things today. Day, uh, three, four major things that uh, will help us walk through. And James in th this section of scripture kind of takes us point by point. So if it seems like a literal message today, point A to point B to point C, number one, you won't feel anything weird because you know that's how I operate. But, but number two, James does that today. James takes us from point to point to point and he builds on it to get us to verse 18. I want to start with verse 18 and then we're going to go back to verse 13. In James chapter 3, verse 18, it says, And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. We need peacemakers today in the church of Jesus Christ. We need peacemakers in our relationships today. We need to be pulling people together, not dividing people. We need to be pulling the church together as one, not as these individual units that are out there based on personality and popularity. 
we need to be pulling together. We have the opportunity to be servants of righteousness today. And we have the opportunity to learn how to sow peace. How do we do that? James is going to talk about that in verses 13 through 17. So let's jump back and let's begin with self-examination. Self-examination is found there in verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. And so we find here that the first thing is a question that James raises right there in verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? So let those two words stick out. Wise and understanding. What do those words mean? What is James saying? Well, wise here is the idea of wisdom that's derived from moral insight. It is a personal knowledge of God's way. And so we look at the book of Proverbs, for example, and we see a lot of Proverbs. All 31 chapters are filled with wisdom. We look in other portions of Scripture and we see the wisdom of God. You and I can draw, we can be wise people because we draw on the wisdom of God. Now, why do I say we got to be careful and we need to begin with self-examination? Because sometimes, sometimes we think we have the right answer. Sometimes in the way we do things, in what we say, how we act, where our thinking goes, we create what we think is good wisdom. And then someone comes alongside of us who has the word of God and we see God's wisdom. In the book of Isaiah, God said, my ways are not your ways, neither are your thoughts my thoughts. So we know right away from the word of God that sometimes the way I think may not be the way God thinks. And so I need to do self-examination. I need to go to the word of God. I need to find the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. And I need to see what God's perspective is on these things. And then also it says here in this verse, in the question, uh, not only about wisdom, but understanding. Understanding is knowledge through experience. It is knowledge through experience. So you may face something, I may face something where we make a decision and we start walking, but someone else who has lived longer, maybe has been through the trenches and, and, and just a horrible dirt of life would say, oh, don't go that way, Pastor Bob. Don't go that way, John Doe. Don't go that way, Jane Doe. Don't move in that direction because I've been there and I know what can happen if you go there. You may think this is okay, but I want to give you some understanding from my personal life. I want to give you some insight that, that will help you so you don't continue or go down a wrong road. So we have in this building two mighty things, two mighty forces. We have the wisdom of God and we have people who have lived experience and who love us and care about us. And when the wisdom of God connects with people who love people, we have the opportunity to change and move ahead. We have the opportunity to be different. I don't need to live where I am. I don't need to live under guilt and shame and condemnation. Because I have the wisdom of God and I have friends. I have friends who have understanding. And when they come together, they are, that's going to help me move in a good direction. I want to encourage you that as much as we as a staff pray for you, you need to pray for us too. Because Satan goes after many people on many different levels. And Satan would love to take the things that you and I do and just destroy those things. So let's use wisdom. Let's walk in wisdom. And we see also in verse 13, it says, by his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Here's where character is modeled in the second half of this verse. Character is modeled. We see here that we show wisdom in demonstration. Now, when I get the wisdom of God, when I get understanding especially from people who have walked in a certain way, when I bring those two things together and I move in a good way, I am going to show out of my life. I am going to demonstrate out of my life 
what wisdom is able to do for me. So when that friend comes beside me, when God speaks to me, I am able to realize that both my friend and my God want to make me a person who is able to walk in integrity. And if I listen to God and I listen to my friend, I will be successful. I will be successful. If you're struggling today, if it's a battle today, don't be embarrassed about that. Let's find God's wisdom. Find a friend who loves God and who can walk beside you and you don't need to stay where you are. You don't need to stay where you are. And I know that maybe you're sitting here this morning and you would say, oh, Pastor Bob, I, I just don't know if I can ever be used again. I don't know if I can ever serve again. And I want to tell you something with a story. 30 years ago, I said the very same thing. 30 years ago, I resigned my first church because my wife had left. And I ran into a man, Larry Katz. And Larry Katz not only became that friend, but he had the word of God. And I remember sitting in what was Grace Fellowship in Red Lion, Pennsylvania, before we moved to this facility. And I was hurting. I, was, I thought I would never serve God again. I thought it was all over. I thought, God, what's going to happen? I took a lot of my theology books and I threw them in the garbage. That's how far I went. I threw them away. God, I'll never have use for this again. And one day, going to Grace Fellowship in Red Lion, a man by the name of Jim Scalthorpe was the head of the ushers. And he walked up and asked if I would help take the offering. And for a hurting man, in that moment, that was the greatest blessing in my life. That was the greatest blessing. So I want to say to you today, that if you're sitting here thinking you can never, ever be used by God again, I am sitting here to tell you that's not true. I am sitting here to tell you that God can put wisdom from his word into your life and God can send people with wisdom into your life who will help you change, who will get you on the right path again, who will help you move in a good way. Don't walk out of here alone today. Don't walk out of here ever thinking God's done with you. Don't ever walk out of here letting someone convince you that you can serve God. You'll never hear that from my lips to you. You'll never hear that because I believe as we listen to the word of God and to our friends who love God, we have the opportunities to change. And so we see in this passage of scripture that I can show out of my life. There is something beautiful and attractive. That's what the idea there is in verse number 13 when it says show out of. We don't see those two words out of, but it's the idea of showing out of. It's the idea of us realizing that because God is working in us, he wants to produce something beautiful. He wants to make something beautiful of your life today. And you know, one of the things that happened along the way that I thought is very beautiful is that Larry Katz had asked me, as time went on, if I would head up a small group of single older people. And so I did. And so I got to know these people and we were meeting at my now, my wife who now Sue, we were meeting at her home. And my son did something that was horrendous and very um, not, not good he kicked a soccer ball into Sue's front window. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> and so naturally the responsibility to get it fixed. But when, when, when I took the window back and I rang the doorbell, I'll never forget that day. This beautiful woman in a white dress was standing in the doorway. And it was that moment that God not only gave me the opportunity to serve him again, but gave the opportunity for someone to come into my life. 
And so we find here that God takes those things and he makes beautiful things when we listen and when we follow. And we find here that this is evident in the transforming power that God does in your life and my life. Look at the word meekness there in verse 13. It says, in meekness of wisdom. Meekness here is gentleness and mildness. It's power under control. And as a friend, I don't grab you by your shirt and tell you how rotten you are. I maintain composure and I come with a meek spirit to help you and I keep myself under control in that process. That is what James is saying here. The wise person, the understanding person is able to show out of their life a meekness that is able to influence the lives of others. Now we see two big put-offs and put-ons with the next two points. This is kind of my list. So grab a pen, maybe check it out online. You'll, Kyle will put all this stuff online if you miss it as I go down through. But look at verses, 13, uh, verses 14 through 16. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. What is James saying here? If I approach you because I'm going to quote help, and I come not in wisdom, but with my motives, I'm going to hurt you. Because here we see a list of bad behavior that can come out of me when I want it to be about me helping you. When I want it to be about me being the one that's exalted and glorified because look at who I'm helping. And so look at that list with me. Let's go down through it here and, and let's view it as we, as we look at these verses. A bitter attitude of jealousy. That's in verse 14. A bitter attitude of jealousy. That's an attitude of negativity to those who may not agree with you. If I walk into a situation to be an influencer and I am only going because I want people to agree with me, I am creating a bitterness in my heart that can develop into a hatred or an animosity toward a person that I'm trying to help. If I can't make them be what I want, I'm doing it for all the wrong reasons. And that's why in the recovery world, as Pastor Reggie and I go to Colonial House and Kelvin comes along to Colonial House and we have the opportunity to go to both Colonial Houses, we say it over and over, we hear it over and over, I can't change you, I can change me, but I can't change you. I can give you wisdom, I can give you insight, I can give you help, but you will have to make that change. But if I go thinking I'm the Savior, or if I go downtown as the white savior, it is going to fall flat. Because if I don't go in a spirit of meekness and I make it about myself, I'll do more damage. I want to encourage us today, when God calls you into the life of another person, when God calls you to be the influencer in someone's life, go in that spirit of meekness. You're coming to give them the wisdom of God and your experience in life, verse 13, so that when they accept that, you have the opportunity to speak to someone. You're not going there in control to be the change maker. You are going as an instrument of God. He also says in this verse, not selfish ambition. Again, that, come back, that comes back to motive. Using divisive means to promote myself. I'm going to create an environment as an influencer that's going to make me exalted. I'm going to create a, 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 a spirit that's going to just make me feel good. One of the things I learned early on, again, I have to go back to Pastor Katz. I have to go back to self-confrontation. I have to go back to early principles I learned. And that is when you are dealing with people as an influencer, keep the circle small. We have a tendency to want to tell everybody. Hey, guess what I'm doing for this person? Hey, guess how I'm helping this person? Hey, nobody should know that but you and that person. 
That is keeping the circle small. I've said this before. I say it to the staff. You've heard me say it from this pulpit. If there's a staff member who's struggling with a staff member and those two people are able to work it out, I should never know about it because if somebody comes to me and tells me the negativity of that staff member, guess what happens? I put in my head a negative staff person. And we need to keep the circle small. So as you become an influencer, as you become someone in someone's life, make sure that that selfish ambition is put down. James goes on to say there in verse 14, uh, make sure that you check your heart. Make sure you check your heart. What is the heart motivation? Matthew chapter 15, we won't turn there, but verses 19 and 20, I, I've used these verses before. It's out of the heart that come the issues of life. There are things like lying and adultery and false uh, you know, words and, and bad thinking. All those things are in those two verses. And, and, and so we got to check our heart in being an influencer. Why am I an influencer at Genesis Church? Why am I an influencer in someone's life? I got to make sure my heart is at the right place in that role. And then I also see here, I need to make sure I speak truth in verse 14 and make sure that you do not boast and be false in the truth. I need to make sure that arrogance does not overshadow truth. Arrogance will overshadow truth when I want the truth to be my truth and not God's truth. Arrogance will overshadow and come over you and hurt you when I know I have all the answers. I got to be careful that that false truthfulness, that, that idea of a wrong motive doesn't come out. It needs to be God's truth. And then we got to make sure that it's not earthy. He says here, as you look down into uh, verse 15, that it is not earthy. Earthy is the idea of finiteness. It's the idea of earthbound. It's the idea of living for now. The wisdom that we give is to help someone continue on in their spiritual life. It doesn't just help us live better down here. It helps us live better in this direction with God. So it's not earthy wisdom. It's not something we throw together because we found it on a TV show or in a textbook. It is something that we know comes from God. It is heavenly wisdom. It is God's wisdom that comes. It's not earthy. It's not something that's finite. It's not sensual. In other words, it's not part of the natural world. It's not devilish. There's spiritual warfare that goes on. There's spiritual warfare. Maybe God says to the person who needs an influencer, oh, don't tell anybody your difficulty. Don't tell anybody your situation because it will be embarrassing or you don't want your name in any way, you know, to be, to be blemished. So don't, don't talk about your problem. And that's devilish because the devil would love to keep us in our heads. He would love us to keep us in our thoughts. He would love us to keep it. He loves to keep us in our mind. And any kind of wisdom that's not of God can become devilish. And also there can be confusion. Look at verse uh, uh, 15 again. Not only is it earthly, not only is it unspiritual, not only is it demonic, but verse 16, where jealousy and selfish ambition are, there will be disorder and every vile practice. In other words, there's confusion and unsettledness and agitation. Whenever we are not walking in the spirit of God with what we have learned through life to help someone else, and when we are not relying on the word of God, it can be something that's ugly and hurtful to people. It can be hurtful. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you thought someone was going to be a good mentor. Maybe you thought that person was going to be a, a good influence in your life and they went out and they gossiped about you and they went out and told the stories that you said in confidence and you're hurting this morning. Maybe the church has done that to you. Maybe people have done that to you. Maybe family has done that to you. You put yourself out there and it just turned into an ugly situation because the people you trusted, they did not care. 
as much as is in me this morning, let me encourage you as hard as it will be, take that step of trust again. Take that step of trust again. Trust us at Genesis Church. Trust us with the word of God that we might be able to help you, that we might be able to give you what will be encouragement, direction for change, and a happiness and a peace and joy that only comes from God. As I look at this portion of scripture, when you look at James 3.17, we see the put on. I just gave you a bunch of put off stuff. We don't want to be like that in giving wisdom. We don't want to be like what is mentioned in verses 14, 15, and 16. What do we want to be like? Well, God's going to show us in verse 17. He says here, submit, or wrong chapter, verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first pure, and then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and insincere. And so when I look at this portion of scripture, I see here that there are some characteristics that can, we, we can write down. Now I got some uh, dirt here and I got some plants here. Now this is really, uh, this is really a task because my wife and I, we kill things in our yard, okay? So uh, pity these little plants, okay? But what I wanna say is, I wanna encourage you with this planting. I wanna encourage you that being an influencer means you get your hands dirty. It means you get, you're down in the trenches with people who are struggling. You're down on the streets with people who are struck. You put yourself in situations where it gets dirty because that's where people are today. Oh, we dress ourselves up. You know, we put on a clean shirt and our pants are clean and we got nice shoes and, and we look pretty good on the outside. Maybe we got new glasses. You know, we combed our hair, got an Apple watch. You know, we look pretty good. Look pretty good. But when you take all that away and get inside, it doesn't hide the hurt that we sometimes face. And when I think about being a, a, an influencer, I think about planting, because that's the idea here in this passage of scripture. It is the idea of planting, is the idea of helping someone to grow. It's the idea of helping someone to prosper. It's in helping someone get to the place where they're beautiful again. And what I see here in this passage of scripture, if I'm going to do wisdom well, I need to approach it with purity. What does that mean? That there is no guile. In John chapter one and verse 27, and uh, I'm just gonna quote that verse, Jesus sees Nathanael. And Jesus says about Nathanael, there is a man with no deceit, no guile. You know, when we come to help someone there's no guile. We're not out to deceive someone. We're out in the purest way possible to be able to help that person. And then it's peaceable, the Bible says there in, in verse 17. And the word peaceable is the idea of fostering unity. We're fostering unity, not creating disunity. If I'm using the wisdom of God and I'm using my experience in life to help you, I'm not trying to divide us. I'm trying to pull us together because I love you. Because I care about you. Because you are important in this building, not out there on the street somewhere. So this idea is fostering this peace. It's the idea of fostering unity and then gentleness. Gentleness carries with it the idea of understanding the feelings of others. Understanding the feelings of others. There will be people in your life and my life, I remember, oh my goodness, I remember in Red Lion, I remember in Pastor Katz's office, I remember how I sat there and cried and cried I remember my two old neighbors. I remember how they would sit and watch TV in their house. They were in their 70s. And in the middle of my catastrophe, 
they would ask me to come over. They had a little dog, Gigi, and that little dog would run around, but you know what? They'd watch TV and most of the time I just sat there and cried. They didn't condemn me for my feelings. They didn't condemn me because I was crying. Pastor Katz didn't say, turn off the tears. Don't tell people to turn off their feelings as they're walking through things. We need to feel, we need to walk through that as the Holy Spirit uses you to work in someone's life, as he uses you as a great mentor, as he uses you as a great influence. Sometimes just let somebody cry. They might cry the whole hour. They might cry, you know, and not say anything. They might leave with just their handkerchief and wiping the tears. But you let them cry. Let them cry. That's what this verse is telling us here. It is the idea that we are to be gentle and then we're to be merciful. And that is filled with compassion, filled with compassion. Now remember the whole time we're leading people in God's way. The whole time we're working with people to move in a biblical direction. But at the same time, the empathy and compassion that can come out of us can be such an influence in the life of someone. Most people today who have messed up hear this from their relatives. You're never gonna change. You're always gonna be that way. You'll always be a failure. You'll always be nothing. You'll never get a job. You're a loser. Those aren't words in our vocabulary. Those are not words in God's vocabulary. We are able to take the word of God and help people as they accept the word of God, want to be changed by the word of God, have the word of God in their heart. We are able to see them move from the messiness. We're able to see them move from all the dirt, all the dirt. We're able to see how God is going to shake off that dirt. He's going to put it in its right place. And we're going to see somebody shine good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. What does that mean, without hypocrisy? It means you don't wear a mask. You don't wear a mask. Well, how, how, do, how does somebody like me apply that? Well, I can only use my point of reference in the rehab centers. Because when we talk about our thoughts, man, I can share with those guys where my thoughts can go. I can share with those guys what it's like to live in your thoughts. And many people sitting there understand that because in that moment, they're right there. But the thing that we hear, Pastor Reggie and Kelvin and I, when we go to the rehab centers is this, man, you guys are different. You guys come in and you're real. You guys tell us about your life. You guys tell us how you messed up. You guys, you know, we're sitting here having a conversation as a group of men. I hear from the technicians. The guys just can't wait till you three come in because you just are real with them. You just share where you're at. You just share where you've been. It gives hope. It gives hope. We as influencers have a past too. We as influencers have a past and the last thing I see in this portion of scripture is what I began with in verse 18. We're garden managers. Every one of us in this room is a fragrance before God. Maybe right now it doesn't smell too good, but we have the opportunity to have someone speak into our life and be a manager. Let me read verse 18 again. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Where's your world of influence? What does God want to you to do in your patch of ground? Your patch of ground this afternoon is your family. Your patch of ground tomorrow might be work, first, second, third shift. Your patch of ground is going to be the neighborhood. Your patch of ground is going to be someone that God brings into your life just because you have an acquaintance somewhere. You have a patch of ground that God wants you to manage. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you would say, Pastor Bob, I'm not ready to manage a patch of ground because I need someone to help me manage my patch of ground. Well, I'm glad if you can say that today, kudos to you. 
Amen that you can say that because I can guarantee you from the top of the leadership of this church on down, you are not going to be excluded because right now there's a mess. There's a mess. I know what it's like to be in a mess 30 years ago. I know what it's like sometimes to make unwise choices. I know what it's like sometimes because I am just as human as you are. And if I step away from truth, I'm going to get in trouble. I want you to know there are people in this place who are not gonna chastise you, but they are going to come alongside of you. They wanna help you work through the garden of your life, work through the patch of ground in your life to be someone useful to God. 30 years ago, a man who was just a head usher, Jim Scawthorpe, spoke to a hurting pastor who thought it was all over and who threw his theology books away. And that man who's in glory right now doesn't understand the impact that he had on a hurt life. That meant so much to me that day. You out here today mean so much to us. You mean so much to us. Maybe your patch of ground needs work. Maybe that patch of ground is you. Maybe that patch of ground is someone else that God has put into your life. James tell, teaches us here in chapter 3, verses 13, 18, how to use wisdom in the patch of ground. The worship team is going to come up. Pastor Jeff, wherever you are, I'm sure you can hear my voice. <laughs> I would like you to do something, Pastor Jeff, you did uh, a moment ago and maybe sing a little longer as an invitation song, and then the last song we'll sing after that amazing grace. It's amazing grace, God's grace, that changes us. You may need that grace this morning. This altar's open. There are people who will pray for you. I'll pray with you. I know what it's like to be in the dirt. I know what it's like to be empty. I'll pray with you this morning. Others will pray with you. Pastor Jeff's going to lead us in a great song, a song that we all know, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.